Football 2021. Uh, if you guys have been following the pro football stream, you will know last time we made the Super Bowl. Uh, we streamed the whole game live. If you didn't catch it, go back, uh, check out the replay. But um, fell short in, the, in the, the championship game last season. So we're back here. You know, we've already run through the draft. We're up to the preseason of 2023. So I think this will be our third or fourth season. Uh, we can probably check that out real quick, see if we can get some season recap so we know exactly how far in we are. Yep. So you can see we've actually made the playoffs three years in a row with these Bengals. So Joe Burrow, since he's arrived, even in his rookie year, we might not have had a winning record, but, you know, we made the playoffs. Uh, and then on to division champs and then conference champs. So hopefully this year we take that next step. Uh, but we shall see. So let's take a quick look at this roster. So obviously we've got Burrow, three years of experience. He's moving on up in the overall ratings. Uh, you can see we've got a couple of good running backs here in Mixon and Roberts. I want to go through and check out the guys we drafted last time. Because uh, I cannot remember for the life of me who we drafted at the front. But of course we would have been drafting at the end of the first round. So those guys at the top of the first round are, you know, you've got you've to hit there. And really you should hit at the end of the first round too. But... Uh, we'll see how our rookies look. David Poole does not look very good to me yet. Um, you know, uh, another rookie running back here. Those can be hit or miss, obviously. Sammy Haskins, he's got a pretty decent rating. When did we take him? Round one. All right. So, we took Haskins in the first round last year. Nice, nicely sized 6'4 cornerback. Um, we also brought in... Dante Jackson, I believe that was a free agent acquisition. So he looks like he's probably our best corner, uh, but Haskins will probably be our second. There's a couple of guys that are just barely ahead of him in the overall ratings, but with him not having any experience, uh, you certainly want to get him in because hopefully uh, he'll grow rather quickly. Uh, got some really, really nice speed, uh, some pretty nice hands. Actually got pretty good endurance for a rookie. That's really surprising. Uh, so, hopefully a little bit of experience moves him on along. Check it out here. We got Hatfield, a rookie linebacker. Uh, doesn't look like anything totally game-changing. But then again, you know, you got to go back and look at some of the individual ratings here. Because, as we've seen in the other streams, uh, the overall isn't the end-all, be-all. You know, he's got good strength. He, for an at, uh, linebacker, uh, looks like below-average agility. Uh, middling to low intelligence not great tackling so he looks like a bust all across the board what round did we draft him hopefully late round five okay desmond ratcliffe also not looking great there the defensive lineman jimmy mcfadden does look pretty good when did we grab him round three so late in the third round we might have had the steal of the draft here, for us at least. Nice 74 overall defensive end. Uh, again, not that strong, but he's got decent agility. No intelligence. Uh, he's picking it up over here on speed. He's a real speed rusher. So that might work out for us on the pass rush. Uh, we added a free safety, Kenneth Witt. So looks like we got a couple of rookies that might be interesting. Uh, not too much. Take a look here at our position counts. And I actually looked at this before I went live. I know we have at least the minimum, uh, no more than the maximum for all these positions, unless I overlooked something. Um, and what I actually did, I did have to uh, move a cornerback to the practice squad, and I added a tight end to the active roster uh, just to kind of even things out a little bit for my own uh, enjoyment. But in the preseason, one of the big things that we've got to look at is contracts. And we can come over here and check out that little trick that we learned and you see, obviously, our number one priority going into this uh, uh, next season, we need to get Joe Burrow signed to an extension. Uh, if we can't, we absolutely need to slap the franchise tag on him. Now, we've got a handful of, of really, really highly rated players here that are going to be free agents. Uh, and these guys, it's going to cost us. We cannot keep them all. So we're really going to have to prioritize here. And obviously, our first stop is Joe Burrow. So let's go in and see. Yeah, this minimum contract is definitely off on its suggestion. 
uh, for a starting quarterback. That, now, the, I will say the highest uh, salary that I've seen given out, even to the top-notch players in this game, seems to be right at $10 million. So that might, I don't know if that's the max in the game. There may be a, a base salary max that I didn't pay attention to when I created the league. Uh, but what we're going to do, you know, Joe's obviously the, he's the center of the entire franchise. So we're going to max that out at what I think might be a max contract. Uh, if not, I think it's a pretty good, it's a pretty good starting point at least. If he wants more, he wants more. Uh, but we are going to front load this. And we're going to try to lock him up for five years on this contract. Uh, so let's see if he's down with that. I don't know, the, the years and the way it's front-loading this, it's not quite how I would structure it, but um, we'll give it a go. We'll see. Uh, let's just front-load it. Doesn't make a huge difference the way that it's breaking it down, at least. So let's see if he's into that. Uh, quarterback starter, ten million a year, front load of five years. We're going to submit that offer to Burrow. Now let's see what our other priorities are because, oh, as of right now, you can see up here in the top right our cap status. We're four million over the cap. We're only losing about thirty-one million in uh, cap space. So you know that drops us down to about what is that, seventy-three million. Uh, Burrow, if he signs, would take us back up to 83. So we only have about seven. What's up, Ward Clan? We're glad to have you. We only have about 17 million in cap space here to play with, and we still got a lot of talent to to re-sign. And the other thing you got to remember is, along with the talent that we need to re-sign, we're also going to have some rookies next year, and we're going to have to pay them. So we can really probably only go really, really big contract-wise on one other player. So we need to be careful with that. Uh, and then it's going to get relatively tight really, really quick. So, where do we prioritize? Uh, I will stick with, you know, everything else that I've talked about is building the offensive line and defensive line. Now, the good news is it looks like this is mostly skill positions. So, our lines, as we have them set up, are, are good to go. Assuming we grab Burrow, now we need to look and see... Uh, what kind of talent we've got, and who we really want to spend some money on for the next handful of years. So I'm looking at a couple things here. I'm looking at that overall rating. I'm also looking at age, and then I'm trying to take into consideration the because my just my first instinct would be to go down here to Sean Williams and drive the Brinks truck up to his house because he's our best defensive player and it's not really even all that close but the problem with that is he's 32 years old it's about time for him to start declining and he was on a really cheap contract I doubt he's going to be interested in signing anything near that again so that's probably out of the question uh, also I can look down here at these cornerbacks I'd love to resign them but we did just bring in a rookie uh, who's about that talented so we're okay there I believe so I'm really looking at a couple of players um, you know Damian Willis 26 years old Stanley Morgan at 26 years old Jordan Franks at 27 years old those are guys who are very much in their prime hey <laughs> absolutely uh, but anyway these are guys that are definitely in their prime I would definitely like to have them around They're playmakers for Burrow so we need to probably at least sign one of them. And to be honest, Jordan Franks always shows up in the the highly rated guys uh, at the uh, when we look at the game summary. So let's stick not as a key player. Sorry, start. We probably should have made Burrow a key player. Uh, um, this suggested minimum contract. I've offered a handful of players these suggested minimums, and they've gotten really upset with me and sort of laughed me out of the room. Uh, so I'm gonna kind of offer what I think they might be worth or might not be mad at. Uh, I'm thinking with this guy, he's relatively talented. He's still relatively young. Uh, I'm actually going to start at three and a half, and he may even get a little bit upset with that offer, but we'll see if we can do it. Now, see, that's more the, when I talk about front-loaded contract, that's more what I would expect to see. And I don't know, actually, uh, that 10, 11, the weird thing we saw in Burroughs may have been because the max contract may actually be um, it may actually be the uh, the ten million might be the max. 
Lord Clamel says he only sees a dingy on the screen. So that means that my OBS is not set up correctly. It's picking up the wrong window. So let me do one thing real quick. Let's see here. Uh, you're probably going to lose everything except for my face. See it's picking up a see it's picking up a game capture window, but it's not picking up the the windows within the window. So let's remove it. Try to add a new input real quick. See if we can get this correct. If we can't, uh, you know what we can do is we can always go with a display capture. I'll try the windowed capture one more time. It's usually the best. Oh, it's working now. And let's move it down. What about now, Lord Clamel? How's that working out? You seeing me? You seeing me now? You seeing uh, Jordan Franks? Anyway, I'm gonna make this offer. Uh, it, uh, it showed up on my OBS, so you tell me if if that changed anything for you. Um. All right, cool. All right, so anyway, what I'm doing, I can't remember if I did it or not, and you can't help me out since you couldn't see this screen, but I'm offering him $3.5 million as a starter. Oh, <clears throat> we'll make it a four-year deal. We will front-load that bad boy. All right, so hopefully get a little bit of interest there. Uh, I'd also let's make a play for... We can try for Stanley Morgan if he doesn't want crazy money. Um, again, these, these minimum contracts, I'm going to stay away from them. But I'm going to try not to get too crazy. If he gets upset at this, not the end of the world. Um, we just need Burrow to have some targets. And we need to save a little bit of money because now we need to get over to the defensive side of the ball. Now we will at least see... Oh, he wants... <laughs> oh, that's a weird contract. You know what, I would, if we can keep him, I'd go three million, front load that on three years for him. I doubt he's going to be interested in that contract. I think a couple of these people are going to get pissed off at me. Uh, but it'll give me a good feeling for who I actually have a shot at re-signing and who is lost to us. Uh, we will make a run at Leonard. Make him a starter. Go for about two and a half over he's 28 i like i like getting getting these guys till they're like 31 32 years old uh so i like that offer and that might be a good place let's see is there one more defense oh no we got offers out to two we got an offer out to burrow two offensive targets for burrow and two defensive players um if we can i'd love let's go ahead and actually See what Davis Gaither's thinking. Uh, we'll go. Shoot, we'll go three and a half here. He's still really, really young. Love to have him for five years on that as a starter. See what he thinks. Yeah, somebody will get pissed one side or the other. Uh, the Burrow offer, I feel good about. Everything else, uh, I'm, I'm probably undershooting by a little bit. What I think all of those guys actually deserve. Uh, so we'll see what actually happens. Uh, we got to go week by week here in the preseason. Uh, and I'm not terribly worried about what actually happens in these preseason games. I'm far more interested in what's happening in the contract discussions. Ooh, if we're even getting any feedback. We may not get any feedback. Uh, probably should have... Uh, I probably should have gotten these offers out sooner. Like sometime in the last stream. And just didn't get around to it. So we might need to sim a couple weeks. We may not actually get any responses until the first week of the season. Yeah, see, we're not getting responses here on these offers. Oh, shh, that's not ideal. Joe Burrow broke his foot in the preseason. He's out two or three months. So this should be a fun year. Goodness gracious. The nice thing is Wyatt is looking good, at least in the preseason. Uh, but yikes, hopefully it's closer to the two-month range there. we still got two weeks in the preseason, so, you know, 
ideally we could get Burrow back by like week six. If we could maybe have an early bye this year, that would be amazing. And we only missed four or five games from Burrow, but uh, we, we could be looking at a lot more. You know, he, he might miss eight, nine, ten games. Well, he, he was in danger to play every game, but now he's most definitely not going to be playing every game. Uh, he's hurt. <laughs> and we got no responses on our offer. So I don't know if I did it at the wrong time or if I need to go in and issue out more offers, to be quite honest. Uh, I'm gonna off. I'm gonna re-offer Burrow anyway, just because I don't want to screw this up. Oh, current offer, current extension offer. So, yeah, the offer's out there. He just hasn't responded to it. He sh they should be responding to these offers weekly, unless again they just don't do that during the preseason. Uh, it usually does it. Oh, what now? So now my backup fractured his hip. We are not starting off this season uh, on a high note at all. But he's probable with a fractured hip. How how's that work? <laughs> uh, I'm tempted to just play this first game and see what happens. Let's sim it and see who play. I don't know if Wyant will play. All right, yeah, Wyant played. And he actually played decently. He actually played decently. Twenty-two eleven. Uh, it didn't work out for the Bengals, but Wyatt, you know, he got in there. He didn't lose it for him. Uh, the turnover battle was even. Almost 300 yards, a touchdown, a pick, one sack, decent rating. Uh, we really got absolutely nothing out of the running game. Franks had himself a nice game with seven targets, a 71-yard reception, five catches on those seven targets. Um, but yeah, it looked, we just didn't get anything whatsoever out of this running game. You know, let us real quick. What's up, Breeze? Glad to have you, buddy. Top two <laughs> starters in OTP down with AC ACLs in, in baseball. What I really wanted to check on was my offensive line setup here because I've got some guys that ought to be able to block. Uh, and I've got some guys that ought to be able to run with Mixon and Roberts. So unless they're just stacking that box against against Wyatt and daring him to throw, maybe that's why uh, he got you know what appeared to be a somewhat decent game, but a, le a relatively low completion percentage. So Maybe that has something to do with it. Let's sim this week and see if we get responses on any of these contracts. I'm getting extremely nervous. I at least want to see some kind of reaction. There we go. That looks like the number of emails I was expecting. Alright, so Burrow, still six to eight weeks. Not terrible. Rest of the team looking pretty healthy. Oh, nice. So Davis Gaither signed. Leonard hasn't had it. Sean Williams signed. These guys are si Stanley Morgan signed. They're signing a lot lower than what I thought they might. Franks hasn't decided. Burrow hasn't decided. So uh, I thought they might be pretty pissed off, but it actually looks like uh, yeah, running toiler ACLs running the bases. That is crazy. Yeah, I, I knew that the emails uh, were where the the responses to the contracts would be. Uh, the problem was I, I made those offers prior to the preseason even starting, and they didn't respond to anything until just now. So I guess it's just something uh, they're not looking to do in the preseason. I think they will. I think they will respond weekly now that we're in this actual season. But these guys have signed for relative discounts, in my opinion. Let's take a look at what our salary cap looks like for next year. So that would put us, uh, assuming Burrow signs for ten as we've offered. And then we've got an offer out for, man, if everybody signs the offers I put out, I'd be very happy, and we may even be able to sneak in one more signing. And I have no idea who I would target in that particular situation. Um, but let's let's focus on Burrow first, because if he wants to, if he wants more money for some odd reason, then we're going to, 
we're going to want the extra wiggle room to negotiate with him. So uh, let's continue, see how Eric Wyatt can do here. The second year quarterback with, well, he had the fractured hip, but uh, he bounced back from it pretty quickly. So let's see what he could do down in Miami. Miami, the four and a half point favorite, but the Bengals managed to pick up the win 30 points out of the offense. Let's see how they did it. A couple of field, three field goals early. Roberts with a short run, Mixon with a nice run, and then Franks from Wyatt. So Wyatt, again, the low completion percentage, but we've seen that out of Burrow a lot. Could just have something to do with the offense that we're running, to be quite honest. Roberts did have himself a good game. Mixon also had a pretty good game. William Brown, I believe he's our second-year wide receiver, looked good. Jordan Franks, uh, there's definitely a reason we wanted to bring him back in on a re-signing. So um, nice showing there out of our offense. Uh, you can see, I'm sure the three turnovers from the Dolphins helped but uh, you know, you're on the road. You take whatever wins you can get. Pretty even on time of possession. Dolphins actually did a little bit better passing, but we killed them on the ground. So, looking good there. So we go one and one without Burrow so far. Let's see if he's uh, signed up for our long-term contract or not. Darius Leonard signed. Jordan Frank signed. And Joe Burrow is busy. Bro, you got a broke foot. You're not playing. What are you busy with? Sign the contract. Oh, gosh. Take a look here at our performances. Mixon, Franks, Dante Jackson, Jeffrey Roberts, Tranquil Wyatt showed up again. So he's always showing his attitude sucked, but production, effort, awareness, that was all there. Jimmy McFadden, like to see that. Our rookie defensive end making an impact. Brandon Wilson, one of the guys that's a free agent next year, so keep an eye on that. William Brown. So i like to see that. Let's see our injury report. So Burrow now looking at four to six weeks. All right, so week three, we head down to Dallas. Dallas is three-and-a-half point favorite. See if we can pull another upset on the road with the young quarterback, Wyant. Oh, no. We got nothing done on offense. Only managed three points the entire game. What happened there? Wyant was putrid. Thir 12 of 34. Only completed 35% of his passes. Uh, with the passing game going nowhere, they stacked the box, stuffed the run. So Roberts couldn't get anything going. William Brown, the only player that looked alive on the offensive side of the ball for the Bengals. Uh, we even won the turnover battle again, and still that wasn't even... That wasn't even close. So uh, that didn't work out for us. Get healthy soon, Joe Burrow. <laughs> At least we won the one game. Uh, you know, you just hope that he comes back and, and we can make the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wyatt is a... Oh, Burrow signed the contract. Uh, Lord Clamel asked who Eric Wyatt was. Wyatt was one of our draft picks. So everybody that we've drafted, they're all fictional players. So this started off with uh, a real roster. And anybody that we draft after the game gets going, they're all fictional. Uh, the game doesn't have like any real life draft classes lined up or anything. You know, we can pretend that somehow we got uh, well, Trevor Lawrence if you want to. I, I can probably go into an editor and like change his name, but uh, he's not going to perform like Trevor Lawrence, so probably not going to do that. All right, so Burrow signed our offer. Let's take a quick look and see what that does to our salary cap for next year. Oh, see, and now we're right at it. And we're going to have to re-sign rookies. Might still like to take a flyer on a guy like this, see if we can grab him. We'll see if we can get that signed. Might put us a little bit over the cap. Once we sign rookies, it would certainly put us over the cap. But uh, if we can do it, we're going to do it. Putting ourselves into a bit of a tight space. But I don't feel like we're overpaying too many people uh, well past their prime. You know, we've got Schwartz here, the tackle. Uh, certainly one of the older players that we've got under a contract. But even he's on a relatively short contract. Um, you know, we've got Morse until he's about 34. 
So I, I don't feel like we're overpaying guys that are that are extremely old. <laughs> uh, draft Day Sports Wolverine Studios needs to get a crystal ball. Is that what you're saying? Get that crystal ball out and like see some uh, future draft classes and bring in some real ones. Yeah, you can do that in like a basketball game, but in a football game, in seven rounds at 32 guys, even if you did it once, you couldn't do it more than the one year. So let's delete emails, and let's go play this out. So we've got next season set up contract-wise, in my opinion. Now it's time to see if we can maybe squeak out another game or two before Burrow gets back, or if Burrow comes back and just saves the day, uh, or if this season's a step back for the Bengals. So we move into week four. We're on the road yet again at the Steelers, four-point dogs yet again. And again, the offense can't muster but one score. Wyant with another terrible game. Uh, he did at least have the one nice long pass to Jordan Frank. So, again, glad to have Frank signed up. But Wyatt, well below 50% passing. Again, terrible rating. Uh, Roberts can't get anything going. So, somebody needs to put up, like, the bat signal or whatever. Like, we need Joe Burrow ASAP as possible. Um Let's check out the injury report. All we can do is go week by week and see, you know, what does this injury report say? What's this? See, Wilson wants more money. And I was already pushing us up over the cap on him. Uh, that might be a position we just have to let go. Burrow's down to two to four weeks, so we should have him within a month. We need a buy is what we really need. Like, Give us a free week. A free burrow this week. Anyway, at least, you know, at the same time, playing football at home against the Browns is kind of like a bye week sometimes. <laughs> so I don't want to get ahead of myself, but we're home in Cincinnati. We're the favorite. Let's see if Wyant can do it in front of the hometown crowd. Absolutely not. We got smashed. Wyant was god-awful again. So I was hoping that he would be decent in the backup role, uh, but it's just been an... Uh, utter disaster outside of the one decent game at Miami. And here, Roberts got going again on the ground. Uh, ooh, William Brown targeted 12 times, only brought in seven of them. That's concerning. But then again, uh, if the guy throwing you the ball can't get it to you, uh, sort of explains that issue. Oh, thank goodness a bye week. Let's just go ahead and sim this. And then we can go over and check out the emails, see how the injury report looks. Uh, no real decent quarterbacks and free agents. And the problem is we're over the salary cap, so we can't make any signings anyway except for minimum signings. So really just not worth it. We hope for the best. We got we got the bye week out of them. See, I mean, it says he played decently, but sure didn't seem that way to me. All right, Joe Burrow, back in a week or two. Back in a week or two. So, points per game, how are we third? Oh, 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 that's Denver. <laughs> that is Denver. That is not us. Very much, we are not third in points per game. Uh, we got to be dead last in points per game, to be honest. Uh, we're headed on the road here once again without Burrow. We're big-time underdogs, six point. Dogs on the road, mile high, and we pull out a big win. So, right, when, the biggest underdog game we've had yet this season, and we got the win. So, how did that happen? Wyant played decently. Still a terrible completion percentage, but look at the 343 yards and three touchdowns, no interceptions. Uh, there were actually no turnovers in the game. Uh, Wyant just hit some big ones, and I wonder if this isn't, some receivers making some plays. So look at that. Jordan Franks, three catches for 80 yards and two touchdowns. William Brown, eight targets, five catches, 162 yards on those five catches. So, yeah, William Brown is absolutely a huge playmaker, as is Jordan Franks. Uh, and Auden Tate's been all right. So that's how they did it. Pulled off another shocking upset in Denver. So that, uh, if we sim this week out, Let's take a quick look at where the standings are. We're here in week eight. Uh, let's check the inbox real quick first. 
see the player performances, Tate, Franks, Brown, Wyant, everybody we pointed out. Uh, Davis Gaither on the defense played well. Roberts played well. Schwartz played well, the tackle. So week eight injury report, Joe Burrow is doubtful. So he is a possibility to play this week, but he's still doubtful. Let me see where the standings are here in week eight. Yeah, the tight ends are always huge. you got to have some good tight ends. So the standings aren't that bad for us. You know, uh, if we're going to have a weird year like this, the standings aren't all that bad for us. Uh, we're only two games out of first place in the division. And we're about to get our quarterback back real soon. Look at this. 89 points uh, total on the year. The Seahawks are three ahead of us, so we have the worst scoring offense in the league. But at the same time, look at the Seahawks. They're 0-7. They haven't won a game. They've given up 210 points. We're down at 122, which is actually pretty good, especially when you figure uh, an offense this terrible is probably putting the defense in some bad spots. So look through here at the points against. I mean, Carolina looks to have a real good defense. Washington. Oh, the Dolphins got a real good defense. Surprised we beat them. So there's a handful of teams that have uh, similar defenses as far as points against. Uh, so the the defense has kept us in some stuff, and the offense, you know, they they picked their spots. I suppose they they showed up a couple of times, and both times they were able to do just enough. So. Let's see what we get here. It's probably a, one more week of Wyatt here against the Chargers. We're at home. We're actually the favorite. Uh, we pull out another win. We pull out another win. And how did we do it? Who was the quarterback? It was definitely Wyatt. Once again, 11-26, 166 yards. He did take care of the ball. Uh, we won the turnover battle. Roberts had a decent game. William Brown making plays again. 11 targets and only four catches. You know, uh, so I, I don't know. Did we get a defensive touchdown or something? Oh, we got a couple of safeties. <laughs> we scored two safeties in that game. So we might not have won the turnover battle. Per well, we did actually by one, but along with that, two safeties. That's absolutely massive. That's the same as a, tur that's a turnover plus points. So the two safeties, obviously the difference in this game. Wow. Very interesting way to win. But that moves us up to three and four. So now, now should be the return of the franchise. Let's see who played well. That's all defense. Look at these linebackers. Davis Gaither and Tranquil. Great games. Roberts, William Brown, Desmond Ratcliffe. Uh, I believe he was, was he a drafty last year? That came in looking a little bit underrated, but has really shown up on the field. Let's take a look here in week nine. Joe Burrow is probable. Looking good for us. Looking good for us to make a run here toward the playoffs. See what happens. So we get the Texans at home. We're four and a half point favorites. Oh, the game went to overtime. I think that's a little bit of a uh, preview here. We'll see who won it. The Bengals win in overtime. And it, no, it was the Eric Wyatt show again. He threw for almost 400 yards. Very interesting. So still can't quite break 50%. Kind of like Burrow when he was younger. Uh, but Roberts had a good game. William Brown went crazy. Jordan Franks went crazy. Uh, so, Franks and William Brown have really been the offense this year for the most part. Uh, Roberts has had uh, some big games here and there, uh, but William Brown and Jordan Franks carrying the offense. Not a whole lot of turnovers. So, Mixon from Wyatt, field goal, Jordan Franks with a big pass. You know, this this offense that we're running really seems to favor the big play. The quarterbacks end up with with lower percentages, but they can get some gaudy yardage and touchdowns. Uh, so it seems like a bit more of a longer passing offense that we're running, would be my guess. I shouldn't have to guess at the offense, but, um, you know, I don't, I don't, I'm not that comfortable with all the strategy and everything in, in the, the pro football game just yet. 
We can see who played well. Of course, it's going to be Franks, Brown, Wyatt, Roberts, and that's it. <laughs> All right. Joe Burrow is fully recovered from his injury. Let's double check we don't have him sitting out on a depth chart or anything like that. And we do not. We very much got him first on the depth chart. Wyatt has actually, I think he's improved a couple of points as this season's gone on. And that's, I, I like when, assuming that I'm correct in saying that, I do like when the ratings change dynamically throughout a season. So let's get this game simmed up. Burrow in his first game back. 40-18 to 18 against the Raiders. I assume that Burrow played, right? Yeah, he, oh, Joe Burrow comes back. And starts it off with a game where he throws and completes 80% of his passes, 259 yards, adds in this 76-yard touchdown run. So he almost pulled one of these Lamar Jackson, you know, 250 yards, two touchdowns through the air, nearly 100 yards, and two rushing touchdowns. So Joe Burrow, making up for lost time there, took advantage of the three turnovers by the Raiders and absolutely put it on them in his return game for the Bengals, 40-18 to over the Raiders. Awesome stuff. You know, running that 76-yard touchdown run. Uh, guess the broken foot healed up just fine, right? All right, they're worried about us underperforming. You know, that, that tends to happen when your franchise quarterback... Yeah, yeah, hit sack. We're, we're back in good hands. Burrow's back. He's healthy. He's doing things. Uh, rest easy. And uh, make sure to check us out. I'm sure this will be up. It should still be up on Twitch. should be up on YouTube tomorrow. So uh, check out the second half of the stream. See if we make another run at the championship this year. Uh, I'm optimistic. I think Burrow being back, we should be able to to get into the playoffs. I don't want to say it's going to be easy, but I'm optimistic we can make it. And then when we get there, anything can happen. So we're headed to Kansas City. We're two-point underdogs here in week 11 of the 2023 season. See what we can get done against the Chiefs. And, oh, my word, 43-3. to three. Wow. So we, were one of, we just went from one of the worst offenses in the league to – Back-to-back 40-point weeks. Uh, it's amazing what a quarterback can do, especially when he's got that kind of offensive line in front of him. And look what it's opening up for our running backs. Roberts averaging three and a half per carry. Mixon up around seven. Uh, both of them had, you know, 50-yard games, so we had about 100 yards rushing. Uh, Auden Tate stepping it up. Uzama. So it looks like Burrow where where Wyatt was really focusing on William Brown and Jordan Franks. It looks like Burrow spreading the ball around a little bit. Uh, not a killer completion percentage, uh, but he got the job done, you know. Uh, he got the job done. And Wyatt, Wyatt came in and played a little bit, went two for three. He had two – why did he have two touchdowns? Why is, did they bring him in late? Uh, now I'm petrified every single week that Burrow got hurt again or something terrible's happened. Was my home's injured? Let me go look. All right, so Burrow's still not on an injury report. He's all right. Um, well, let's just go back into here and go back and see. Did Mahomes even play? No. Is he even on the Chiefs roster? We can take a look at real quick here at the Chiefs roster. Uh, see if he's even there. I mean, we're three, four years into the future here. Yeah, he's on the roster, and he is injured, dislocated a finger. So he's very highly rated. God, look at that! Almost a ninety arm. He's agile. The intelligence is off the charts. The accuracy is off the charts. It's good speed. I mean, what you couldn't? I mean, if you just got to mold the perfect quarterback, you couldn't do better than this dude. At least the way that he's rated here, the way that I'm seeing it. So. Uh, yeah, it looks like we got really lucky because he's injured, and so they're playing this third-year Jordan Tamu, uh, who is pretty awful. So uh, good for us. We got a free win there. You know, it works for me. <laughs> I'll, I'll take what I can get. You know, we took our lumps when Burrow was hurt. Uh, now they're they're feeling the pain there with Mahomes hurt. Uh, so on the road at the Ravens, four-point dogs. But we win it by four. 
Shul Lamar, Lamar had himself a game. Let's go check out this box score. So Burrow with another run, mixing from Burrow. A couple of field goals in here. Roberts, Uzama. So another good game. Burrow, the player of the game offensively, uh, up above 50%. Got sacked a handful of times. Uh, you can see now the, the running game's opening up a little bit now that Burrow's back. Jordan Franks did his big boy thing again. Six catches for 133 yards. Joe Mixon caught a touchdown. Uzama with a touchdown. Uh, William Brown didn't have a great a great game. Seven targets, only two catches. Uh, but he did have one of them was 51 yards. So, you know, if he's a deep threat kind of guy, you know, that's sort of what deep threats do. A little bit streaky. And to some degree, that's what all wide receivers do outside of a, a handful so Burrow played well. Davis Gaither's having himself a season. Obviously, Franks is. Jimmy McFadden's still looking good. William Brown still showing up on the with the B plus. Good attitude, awareness, good effort. Production was a little bit subpar. All right, we're looking good. We're gonna sim one more week, and then we're gonna go get an update on those standings. This week, we're home against the Eagles. Five and a half point favorites at home in Cincinnati. So let's see what we can get done. And it's another nice win. 31 to 6. Burrow with a good looking game. So here's the scoring. Franks with the big catch. Tate with a short one. Burrow ran another one in. That's got to be four rushing touchdowns for Burrow so far. And, and, you know, in those goal line situations, even in real life, Burrow is a threat. He likes those quarterback sneaks in those kind of situations. So maybe that's what we're seeing some of here. Uh, but really nice percentage, 18 to 24. We've got really nothing out of the running game. Those averages are really pretty awful. Uh, looks like we took advantage of some turnovers. Three fumbles lost by the Eagles. Uh, but a win is a win. Let's we'll simulate through week 13 and get a check on the standings here in week 14. And there we are. You know, it took, what, three, four weeks of Burrow being back, and we're right back in first place in the AFC North. Uh, game ahead of the Ravens, and I know we at least beat them once. They they might have beat us earlier in the season, so uh, that tiebreaker may be even. I'm not sure. But we are a game up, so with four games to play, uh, we're certainly in a good spot. And just a quick look through the rest of the conference. Even if the Ravens caught up, we would still be in with the wild card right now. So, the 49ers looking tough. 351 points on the season. Not too shabby. Although, we're catching up rapidly. All right, four games to play. We're looking all right. Let's see what happens here. Week 14, the Bengals at the Browns. So we kind of we kind of joked on the Browns earlier in the year, and we just joked on them again. God, ever since Burroughs come back, our offense is gone off. Look at the monster game that Joe Burrow just put up. 19 of 25, 76% completion, 468 yards, and five touchdowns. Uh, I believe if that's not a perfect rating it's pretty daggone close so nothing outstanding on the ground but geez you don't need it when <laughs> when the quarterback does something like he just did what a special game out of Joe Burrow man you just wonder what this season could have been if he was healthy the whole time um wow he's been incredible since he's come back huh shockingly uh, Burrow had a good rating in that game. 15 key plays. Wow. Now, a lot of these guys, you know, no key plays, two key plays. Burrow with 15. Obviously huge to have Joe Burrow back. Uh, that's why he's the franchise guy. That's why we wanted to make sure that in the preseason or early in the season, we made sure to get him re-signed for next year. Uh, here late in the year, we can take a quick look at contracts. I don't think we want to 
try to re-sign anybody else if we even can at this point. Uh, let's see who is going to be a free agent soon. So Damian Willis, you know, there's going to be a handful of guys in here we don't want to lose, and we're just going to have to suck it up. It's nothing to be done for it, really. Uh, Willis certainly high up on that list, as is Brandon Wilson. Now, let's see. You know, we we tried earlier on Wilson. I can't remember exactly what we offered him. Uh, but let's see if he'll go for. What did we did we offer him three, or did we offer him two and a half? I'm gonna offer him two eight. See what he thinks about that. I don't remember what the first offer was. I, I, that would be cool to see uh, prior offers on that screen. But we can see if he goes for that, and if he doesn't, you know, we weren't really looking to that. It's somebody we'd like to have back, but not necessarily counting on having back. So uh, the Steelers coming into Cincinnati, Cincinnati seven-point favorites, and they take care of business 45-10. to 10. So we've been on an absolute rampage since Joe Burrow came back. Look at the start to the game. 59-yard pass to William Brown, 40-yard pass to William Brown. Uh, wow. Punt return, so William Diaz getting in on the action there. Quite the game from Burrow. Not much on the ground, but we didn't need much on the ground. William Brown went nuts. Just incredible, incredible offense since Burrow's been back. Headed up to New York to play the Giants. Can the streak continue? No. So they stop us in our tracks 27-14. to 14. Uh, What went wrong for the Bengals? Well, Joe Burrow... Went out and played, uh, he, he did his Eric White impersonation. Uh, Mixon had a handful of decent carries, but Burrow couldn't get anything going, couldn't get anything going consistently on the ground, and those playmaking receivers really just didn't make any plays, and so we fall on the road at New York. Let's clear out our inbox, check on our injuries, make sure there's nothing crazy going on. Oh, Zachary Christensen, a defensive end. Looks like that's probably the year for him. All right. Getting close to the end of the regular season. Getting real close to playoff time. Now's our second game against the Ravens. So we do currently hold the tiebreaker against them. Not sure what the standings are right now, but we get them at home in week 17. This is an ideal situation for us here. A win against the Ravens should lock up. But regardless of what they've been doing, a win against them should lock up the AFC North for us. So can we do it? Yes, we can. William Brown, big catch. Jordan Franks, big catch. And those two guys, when it really, when it's really on the line, they show up pretty consistently. Uh, Jackson, Lamar played a heck of a game, at least through the air. He didn't do anything to us on the ground. Uh, we didn't do much on the ground either, but the passing game was legit. William Brown, Jordan Franks, and Joe Burrow. And so we we pull out the win, 27-21. to 21, Hold off the Ravens at home. So, let's see how the regular season standings wound up. Uh, we went 11-5. and five. So, we were missing Burrow for, what, the first eight weeks? And we ended up 11-5. and five. That's pretty good. I think Burrow only lost one game to the Giants. So after Burrow came back, I mean, we're something stupid like 8-1. and one. So nice end to the season there. 11-5, uh, and 11-5. Five, and five. So there's a handful of teams 11-5. and five. We did beat Denver, I know. I'm not sure we played the AFC South this season. Did we play any of these teams? I don't remember. But uh, we sh we very much won our conference. Hopefully, we're not playing in the wild card round. Uh, so Wilson still wants more money. Well, we can try to give him more money. We can try to give him two, two, uh, three rather, three million a year.
so it's a little bit more uh, nothing crazy we're not going to overextend ourselves with that kind of offer hopefully uh, let's check out the playoffs here we do have to play in the wild card so uh, this could be where you know missing burrow early in the year comes back to bite us because now we got to show up and play in the wild card game so we got the tennessee titans and at this point uh, obviously in the nfl any just one game can send you home crying early uh, let's hope that's not the case here against tennessee Woo! by the skin of our teeth they made the. We had a good second quarter. They made a furious comeback in the fourth to fall just short, 34-31. So Burrow with a run early. Jordan Franks with a couple of nice uh, touchdown catches. Uzama with a late touchdown catch. So the tight ends came up clutch. Turnover battle pretty even. Burrow threw the two picks. That's not great. Tannehill had a pretty good game. Jeffrey Roberts on the ground. Uh did some work nine yard average on the ground uh that's serious business davis gaither 10 tackles that dude what is he he's got 101 tackles on the year doubtful with patella tendonitis i don't know if that was for this game or if it's going to be for next game but uh that would be disastrous for us he's been huge just over and over and over uh, so we want to look at this one so he's questionable there. All right. Moving on. Divisional round. We've got to play Denver. So uh, we snuck up and stole one with Wyant early in the year. Now we got to go back to Denver. We do have Joe Burrow this time, but I'm sure they're out for some revenge. Let's see what happens. Divisional playoffs. Bengals and Broncos. Oh, he did it to him again. This time, Joe Burrow made a mark in Denver. 21 to 13. So, Auden Tate, Jordan Franks, and then the Joe Mixon with the reception. Burrow, 370, three touchdowns, only one pick, three sacks. Nice rating there. Uh, Mitch Trubisky, Mitch Trubisky could not hold up uh, to Joe Burrow. Todd Gurley did some work on the ground. Clearly wasn't enough. William Brown, Jordan Franks. I mean, I, I say these names every single week uh, because they're consistently making crazy good plays for our team. And we are moving on again. So a season that really started off uh, quite scary for us. And now we are getting deep into the playoffs. So again, I, I try to bounce over here and keep an eye on who's playing well. Uh, week to week, and just you know, like these names, they, they kind of stick in your head when you see them enough times, because uh, I want to see which guys are performing well over and over. Uh, kind of helps me, you know, identify who I want to resign, who I want to focus on, and, and that sort of thing. Especially with defenders, because I don't consistently look at the defensive statistics. I feel like those can be kind of situational and don't tell me a ton. Brandon Wilson did resign with that three million dollar offer, so that's good to see. All right, now. Trevino, one of our better defensive linemen, he's got a stress fracture in his foot. He's doubtful. So the defensive line is a little bit banged up. Uh, as long as Davis Gaither plays, uh, I'll be happy. I'll be optimistic about our chances. But we do need to see who is going to be our opponent. Oh, my word. In the NFC Championship, it's Dallas and San Francisco. So that, my friends, is a throwback to my childhood. The Cowboys and the Niners seemed like they were going after it every single season in the NFC Championship game. So I will be interested to see who uh, who moves on. But uh, more pressing to us is going to be our AFC Championship game against the Indianapolis Colts. So the good news is we are back at home in Cincinnati. Oh, we're in... We're in the AFC Championship game in Cincinnati, Ohio. So this is definitely, what, January? And it's 71 degrees out. So that might be some borough weather. We'll see. Uh, let's sim it and find out, right? Yes! The Bengals, 27-10. to 10, Put it on the Colts. Burrow again with a big game. And guys, once again, we are moving on to the championship game, and we're going to stream it. I will have to get a refill before we start this, uh, refill the old beverage here. But we're going to be bringing you another Super Bowl here on the GM Games uh, Twitch stream. 
So with that said, look, Burrow 70%, 343 yards, only one touchdown, nice rating, still nothing on the ground, but when Burrow's throwing for 350, uh, don't need it. The Colts with four turnovers. So our defense has absolutely been crushing people. Davis Gaither did play in a big way. Eight tackles, two sacks. Man, I hope that guy's healthy for the championship. Absolutely killer. Haskins with a pick. Tranquil with a pick. A couple of passes defended. Nice AFC championship game there. Let's see who wins this one. Ooh, the Niners crushed the Cowboys, and that's actually not that surprising. Uh, the 49ers, if you remember, when we were looking earlier in the year at the standings, at the uh, they were they had a great record. Uh, I believe they also had a really good point differential. So as much as we've been really just crushing some competition here, I think the 49ers are probably, if we're not the best team in the league, they are. And you can see they're actually favored. Uh, so... Uh, it wouldn't surprise me at all. Let's take a look at their point differential on the year. They went 13-3, 474 points for, 316 against. So our defense did a little bit better. Their offense did uh, quite a bit better. But, uh, of course, we were missing Burrow for eight weeks. But you have no idea what kind of injuries they've been dealing with either. So you can't just automatically assume that makes up for any difference. So... Let's see what we got here. Going into this game, uh, Christensen's going to be out. Trevino may be available. Otherwise, we're a healthy squad. Let's take a quick look over at San Francisco. Let's see if they've got any kind of prominent injuries that we need to uh, address or take into consideration when we look at this game. Look at the year Garoppolo's been having. Oh, they got Andy Dalton. Isn't that cute? So Garoppolo with a monster year. Uh, looks like one of their guards is hurt. Oh, that tackle's probably not a starter. That tight end's probably not their best. Oh, a little banged up there in the secondary. So it looks like they've got their primary corner, but they're a little bit light there, so maybe we can take advantage of that. Maybe Burrow can do something. All right, second in points per game, first in yardage per game, third points per Per game against fifth in yardage per game against so what a well-rounded team there in San Francisco and of course we're looking all right until you get to the yards per game against um, but uh, this should be hopefully a really good Super Bowl uh, again San Francisco's favored by three and a half uh, if I was an odds maker I would probably agree with that but what we are going to do, I think we can sim it and then watch it. So I don't want to play it where I have any kind of input. So I'm going to sim it. So the game knows who's won at this point. If I just hit that button, we know who won. But we're going to go back and watch this. But first, as I said, quick refill on the uh, streamer fuel here. And I'll be back. We're going to stream the Super Bowl. And hopefully... You know, last year we streamed the Super Bowl. It was an interesting game. Burrow couldn't quite get it done through too many picks. Hopefully this year turns out a little bit differently for us. Give me two minutes and I'll be back and we're going to be streaming some Super Bowl coverage.
All right. Time to get... <laughs> Chris, you just saw it. We're going to the Super Bowl, buddy. We're about to stream another Super Bowl back-to-back -back years. So let's get in here and watch this game and see how it all plays out. Again, the game already knows who won. We have no idea. We're just going to watch it. So we're going to sit back, hit play, uh, maybe give you a little bit of play-by-play. -play. San Francisco, once again, they are favored. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I had to go refill. I uh, had to fill up the wine. Take a quick break because I wasn't sure whether or not we would actually be streaming a game tonight or not. But when we made the Super Bowl, had to stream it. So it starts off and San Francisco's already moving the ball. Jimmy G doing his thing. Oh. Uh-oh. Jarrett McKinnon doing his thing as well with a big run all the way down to our 25. Uh, but they did pick up a penalty, so that's going to help. Incomplete pass, second and 15. McKinnon picked up a few yards, third and long from the Cincinnati 28. They hit the pass, and he picks up the big-time first down to Fuller. So first and 10, down inside the red zone. Garoppolo is sacked by the safety, Sean Williams. Yes, sir. Huge play. You hear the fans get into it a little bit there? Uh, oh, and they come back with the tight end across the middle, so it's going to be third and short from the Cincinnati 7. He's going to drop back to pass to the wide out, and it's a touchdown. The kick is good, and San Francisco takes the early lead 7-0. All right, so now Cincinnati's first possession of the game. Let's see. Burrow going to take off running early. Picks up five yards. Trout's back. He's got some time. Uzama for one yard. Interesting. Third and four. Burrow again. He's got a wide out long, and it falls incomplete. So we're going to be punting. So an, a nice ideal start here for San Francisco. What's up? Chris, <laughs> subscribe with Prime for five months. Love to see it. Shit. All right, so Kittle's hurting us early. Uh, Garoppolo's definitely doing well. There's Davis Gaither finally showing up with a tackle. Second and seven. Garoppolo hits another wide out deep. So San Francisco's moving the ball pretty easily. We went three and out, and they're just doing whatever they want. They're doing what? Oh, there's one that falls incomplete. That's good. So third and seven from about midfield. Garoppolo, another big play to the wideout. Oh, offensive pass interference. That's huge, huge. Can we get our defense off the field? Yes, we can. The Niners have to punt the ball, and we're going to take over. Down by seven. Yeah, I'm hoping that this goes better than the last Super Bowl. Burrow drops back. He's got some time across the middle, through it. Oh, and we get an unsportsmanlike. So second and 17. Oh, the long pass to the running back. Mixon with the catch. 25-yard reception for Joe Mixon. Burrow again to the wideout. Auden Tate, first down. You can see Burrow's dropping back, and he's got some time. Oh, the shotgun. It looked like he tried to run a little bit of a quarterback draw there. Now he's back up under center. He drops back. He's got time. Looking deep. Broken up. William Brown got behind his man, but the cornerback recovered, knocked it down. So now Burrow on third and ten, and that was picked. <laughs> Jumping in while your uh, WMMA 5 progresses. You know what? I just, within the past week, got WMMA. I got it unlicensed off of my old PC and moved it onto this one. I, re I had to restart. I uh, got my G-verse started back up. Uh, booked maybe two shows uh, so uh, I'm trying to get back into it I haven't done any of that in a while just because of the licensing issue uh, but but now here we are in a bad spot they're driving on us yet again first down inside the 10 yard line and San Francisco is really just having their way with us a wide open busted coverage on the left side of the field one cornerback two defenders I don't know what our guys in the middle of the field are doing uh, but 
we are in a hole now, 14 to nothing. So we're going to need to make some plays here. Um, Burrow, it seems like he's had time uh, and just nobody's really been open. Try to get a little something on the ground, and maybe that's what we do is – He's, he takes Jeffrey Roberts 34 yards. You know, not having the numbers, it's hard to say who actually has the ball until the game tells me. Uh, Roberts with the big run, and then Mixon gets stopped short. So second and 10, Burrow's got him. Take off! Run! Do Oh, okay. All right. He, he had the whole side of the field, but uh, he got the first down to Uzama, and now he's going to hand off again. Mixon up the middle for two yards, second and eight. So our first drive that looks like it could potentially end up in some points to the wide out. William Brown for 15 yards and a first down. And we're the Bengals are now inside the 10-yard line. San Francisco penalty, automatic first down. First and goal. Burrow going to take off. Burrow up the middle. Another automatic first down on a big San Francisco penalty. Mixing up the middle for two. Second and goal on the one. And... Touchdown to William Wyatt. I have no idea who that is. That dude hasn't done anything all year. But it's now. I mean, if you're going to do something, uh, the the championship game, the Super Bowl, that's the time to do it. So the Bengals cut that lead in half, 14-7. to And now we see if we can get off the field and try to tie this thing up before we go into the half. But the offside penalty and then Jarek McKinnon, up the side for nine yards and oh no big pass over to Samuel 16 yards first down and the 49ers move it right back into Bengals territory incomplete pass there we really need a turnover is what we need to have happen yeah if you're a Jags fan you definitely need some uh, draft day sports pro football 2021 in your life <laughs> what was that a that was a punt so we did hold them we held them now we get it on the 25. Burrow drops back. Got time. Looks across the middle to the tight end. Franks for nine yards. Second and one on the 34. Four and a half left in the second quarter. Burrow rolls out, gets a short gain. So now third and one. And we're dropping back to pass for some reason. And it works. Auden Tate, 14 yards. First down. Bengals to midfield. Three and a half left in the quarter. Roberts up the middle for basically nothing. Burrow dropping back. He's got guys. He's Oh, and he gets sacked. Look at the running back up here on the top of the screen. He was wide open. Looks like they're in some kind of zone. And now it's third and 20. Wide receivers behind his man. He caught it. That's a first down. He's running. William Brown, 37 yards. So when it, you know, he looked good, then it looked bad. Now it looks good again. Two minutes left. Burrow drops back. Tight end across the middle. Incomplete. Second down. Burrow's got time. He rolls, and he gets sacked. Looked like he had two guys protecting him there. Looked like he could have ran. Uh, we call Cincinnati calls a timeout there. So, a minute 22 left. Once again, third and 20. Burrow rolls again. He's got all the time in the world. Can't find a man. Now, he's, he's not going to run. He's going to throw it into triple coverage. And Cody Sales misses a field goal at the end of the half. He missed the field goal. So we are going into the second half. Still 14-7 San Francisco, but the Bengals do start off with the ball. Burrow looked deep to William Brown. Got broken up. Burrow sacked. So all that money we're paying on the offensive line. And, oh, and the fumble, but our center recovered it. So third and 17, Burrow one more time. Looking deep to the tight end, and he gets the first down. Uzama for 21 yards, and the Bengals dig themselves out of a huge hole once again. Uh, they try to run off of the side. Yeah, this is, this is close so far. We do need some, the Bengals need some breaks, and there it is. The tight end going deep, Jordan Franks. Jordan Franks for 35 yards, moves it down to about the San Francisco 35, Burrow. He's got time, he's got space, he throws into double coverage, but Jordan Franks pulls it in anyway for another Bengals first down. Burrow to throw. Looking deep. Got his wide receiver. Auden Tate, 23 yards, first down, first and goal for the Bengals. Burrow looking to throw, he's got guys wide open everywhere. 
That is a touchdown to William Brown. The sales kick is good, and you guys, this game is tied. Uh, Chris, you're asking who's my highest rated player on the team? Uh, the highest rated player on the team is probably the left tackle that we signed in free agency last year. Uh, he's like a 96, 97 overall. Or were you asking just for the best player that we've drafted so far? 49ers here, second and four. Garoppolo hits his tight end out to the 35. So first and 10, they're going to take it up the middle. Zeigler. Uh, if I had to say the top player that we've actually drafted is probably Jeffrey Roberts, the running back. I think he's about an 88 overall. Yeah, so the offensive line, we drafted a tackle uh, in my very first draft. Uh, then we signed uh, we signed the rest of our entire offensive line excuse me, out of free agency. So we've got a really quality left tackle now. Across the middle... Ooh, lucky catch. All right, we'll take it third and three. Can we convert this? I'll finish my thought in a minute. Across the middle. No, Mixon dropped it, and we have to punt. So, yeah, uh, Mitchell Schwartz, I believe, is our left tackle. He's like 96 overall, something like that. Uh, we're paying him $10 million a year, but he is older. Uh, we got Jamon Brown, one of my L1C4 boys out of Louisville. Uh, Pat Effeline is the other guard. And then the center, I can't remember the name right off, but he's the guy that recovered the fumble earlier. All those were free agent signings. Uh, all of our early draft picks have gone to the defensive line, and then we did draft a corner in the first round of last year. Uh, but the protection has definitely changed from year one to now, and I think that's the reason, along with Burrow's development, the offensive line is the reason that Burrow can actually get back there and, and do some serious damage now. But as the third quarter is winding down, the 49ers are making their move. Nice play there, second and 10 from the 40, up the middle by McKinnon for a yard. So third and 10 from the Cincinnati 39. Jimmy G finds a wide open wide receiver, 18 yards, first down to Fuller, up to about the Cincinnati 21. So a run stopped by Davis Gaither. Another run, tackled by Lowry. This should be the last play of the third quarter. Jimmy G to a running back. Tackled in the backfield, so hopefully we start this off with a field goal. And the field goal is good, so it really sucks that Sales missed that field goal uh, at the end of the second quarter. But here we are with a nice return, down by three to start off the fourth quarter. Roberts to the left for a yard. Burrow drops back. Looking, throwing for a running back, broken up by Sheets, third and nine. And he hits the tight end, Uzama. He loves throwing into that double coverage, but geez, he hits it more often than not. Again, look, that's triple coverage on the tight end, and Jordan Franks comes down with the ball. Burrow looking, going to throw into everybody. The whole defense goes to the tight end, and Burrow's like, yeah, he looks open. Incomplete to Brown, broken up. Fourth and three, and we're going for it. Burrow drops back on fourth and three. He's looking for a target to the tight end, and we turn it over on downs. Oh, what was? Oh, that was a penalty on us. Now San Francisco, first and five from midfield. All right, so that's going to bring up third down. Third and five from midfield. Can we make it? No, we can't make it happen. Garoppolo's killing us. He's killing us on those passes out to the wide out on third down. And now the wide receiver's wide open, breaking for a big-time touchdown. We catch him on the one-yard line. And face mask there, so it's going to be first and goal yet again. And they run it up the middle. Our defensive end was injured. We were off sides. We at least stopped him. Automatic first down. A lot of automatic first downs here on first and goal. And finally, Tevin Coleman takes it in for the touchdown. So now we're going to be down 10 points. 7.44 left in the game. And it's time to start making it happen. We need to get a touchdown. We need a big-time defensive stop. And we haven't really shown that we can stop them with any kind of consistency in this game. Look at that. Oh, 
looked like there was a wide open wide receiver down there on the now the top of the screen the wide receiver's wide open and he it was broken up looked like he was behind the defense and wide open and there's a pick all the way down to the one so that's probably going to seal the ball game and, you know as I said going into it I, I thought they were the better team but I would have liked as close as it was through three quarters uh, the fourth quarter has been pretty disappointing So we're just getting beaten up by a better team here. And they really are a better team. Just frustrated. It seems like Burrow drops back. He's got all the time in the world and they've just got our you know, they've got our offense shut down. Nobody open. So third and 17 here with four minutes to play. Burrow going to try to pass. Drops back. He's got time. Incomplete to Willis. And so we're just going to punt. Yeah, there's not there's not time at all. Like we needed a miracle to even stop him once. And uh, we'll be lucky if it doesn't get worse before it's over. Unsportsmanlike conduct. So we're really... Uh, we're really just completely falling apart in the fourth quarter to an embarrassing degree. Down by 17 with two and a half minutes left. We will at least get the ball back, uh, but I don't know that that means a whole lot at this point. We can't do anything on offense. Can't stop anybody on defense. Finally get one out to Franks for another first down. We're going to call another timeout. We've got one left. Burrow gets set. All that money on the offensive line, they can't keep them upright. One yard run up the middle, we've completely given up at this point. Sacked again. So, fourth and 27. At least don't get sacked. Incomplete pass. They're going to kneel it out. That's the end of the game. 31-14. to So what looked like an extremely tight game got blown open in the fourth quarter. Uh, San Francisco really put it on us in the fourth. And that's the ball game. Back-to-back -back years we made the Super Bowl. Uh, at least it's only two years in a row. You know, we're not Buffalo just yet. But uh, really disappointed two years in a row. Take a look at these season awards. Lamar Jackson, the MVP. Jarek McKinnon from the 49ers, the offensive MVP. Oh, no, I'm sorry, playoff MVP. Lamar was the offensive MVP. Taft from the Giants, defensive. A couple of guys that don't have anything to do with us are the rookies of the year. Yeah, we, we do need the Twitch title. Getting one with the Bengals, man, it, it would just be crazy, right? be crazy. We're not dealing with the Pro Bowl. We can at least take a look. Uh, Burrow's not on here, most likely because he missed the first eight weeks with a broken foot. Uh, Elfline made it. Schwartz made it. So there's Morse made it. So there's three of those offensive linemen that we paid for. Uh, they definitely performed. Uh, just didn't make a difference when it when it counted the most. William Brown made it. Look at that. William Brown with 1,500 yards. Jordan Franks with 1,300 yards and 10 touchdowns. Like, these guys are targets. Davis Gaither made the Pro Bowl. Seven sacks, four interceptions, three forced fumbles. So, really glad to have him resign, certainly. The awards is a drop down because you can actually manually select who wins the award. Uh,. It's sort of, I, I know, I think Out of the Park does a similar thing where you can select, like, you know, who you put into the Hall of Fame, who gets the award in different years, or you get to, like, vote for it or something like that. So, in this, it's a drop down because you can change it if you want. And so, like, if I just chose Joe Burrow to be the MVP, I could hit the drop down, select him, and he's the MVP. But I, I feel like that's such a ripoff. Uh, I just let the game choose whoever they want. 
I'm not going to sit there and try to parse the statistics and decide which of the quarterbacks from all the other teams I think should get it. Like, I want it to be my quarterback, and obviously I'm not going to make it my quarterback unless the game decides he's the one that earns it. So, But anyway, that's why it's a drop down. Yes, we're going to go into the end of the season. We do not care how the Pro Bowl goes whatsoever. Trade players, sign free agents. We need to scout the draft if we haven't already. And scouting points, why does it say zero? Might not be time to scout the draft yet. Maybe we have to actually start the season. Staff signing. Let's take a look at our staff. All right, so they've all got a few years remaining. I uh, believe we signed these coaches in the last uh, round of staff hiring, so I'm not worried about signing staff whatsoever. Really like to scout this draft if I can. Oh, not yet. What was on... What was that? What, what screen was that? Was that League News? League Media? What's the default screen there? Because it said something about my coach. Alright, I missed it. If I skip ahead, it, it might default back to it. Oh, so the Texans tried to hire my coach. But he's going to stick around. So that's nice. I appreciate that. Free agency, it really doesn't matter. Uh, because we are over the salary cap. Yay! You know, we, we re-signed the players that we wanted to have. Here's Mitchell Schwartz, the left tackle I was talking about. You know, he, he's moving on up there in age. He's down to a 91 overall, so he's quickly declining. Uh, really happy that this is the last year we've got him under contract. But uh, he's... 100% still worth his money when you look at how he pass blocks from that left tackle position. But we do know that we need to replace that for next year. Now, Cam Robinson, who's only 28, has actually consistently gotten better. So maybe that's somebody that we can re-sign. Uh, his pass blocking for a left tackle, not great. And the tackle that we drafted, Casper, he's a heck of a run blocker, but not much of a pass blocker. So Casper's really a right tackle. Cam Robinson can't hold down that left tackle, even though he's got a decent rating. So maybe that's a position that we need to look at in the draft. Yeah, we're absolutely kings of the AFC. We ran through the AFC, that's for certain. Uh, but let's get into this free agency. Let's blow right through it. Oh, we great potential out of a tackle. We were just talking about that, matter of fact. Now, let's see, can we scout it now, or do we need to hit advance? Now we can. So, I've always been auto-scouting. I just don't have the discipline to go through uh, all these guys and, and pick who I want to scout individually. So, I'll let that auto-scout do its thing. We'll move on past the scouting period. And now we're about to have a draft. So before we do that, I would like to take a quick look at our roster and see uh, what see what we're really looking at. Oh. So we did lose Eric Wyatt. We're running back's obviously very much set. We lost our fullback. So guard, we've got some good ones, but they're getting up there in age. Tackle, we've already addressed. Schwartz is in time decline. Uh, Casper's a right tackle, so we really need a pass blocking left tackle. Morse, another free agent signing up there in age. We could use some youth on that line for certain. Jordan Frank's the only tight end that we have currently on the roster. We did re-sign him, which is great, um, but he's the only tight end we have currently. So we got four wide outs, and, you know, William Brown's actually the one that I like the best. He's got the best hands. He's got close to the best speed. Uh, I guess he's lacking in endurance. I, I don't know. He's got really good agility. 
uh, and there's a reason that he's consistently a playmaker. So uh, that's not a position I'm looking at immediately. Cornerback, we lost a couple of corners. So even though we do have some youth here in Haskins, he was our first rounder last year. Uh, we could certainly add some depth there. Uh, Dante Jackson got absolutely torched in the Super Bowl. Linebacker, we look all right. It looks like we've got a handful. Uh, Tranquil, Davis Gaither. We're all right there. Defensive tackle. I know Trevino. I don't know why he's got such a terrible overall rating. He's got good. Oh, it's because of the tackling, right? He's got really low tackling. Uh, so Stephen Davis, uh, our first I believe he was actually one of our first draft picks. Lamar Hunt Trophy, Kings of the AFC. That's right. You know, the, the Buffalo Bills did it better than anybody back in the early 90s, but uh, we're doing our thing. So Stephen Davis got a really good rating. No other good overall ratings. Uh, all these guys sort of have different things that they're good at. Defensive end, uh, we've we put some draft picks in here with Christensen and McFadden. Uh, we do need to add another one. You know, the, these guys aren't great, but they're they're all right. We were able to re-sign Brandon Wilson. Feel good about that. We were able to re-sign Sean Williams. Feel good about that. Still feel good about Trayvon Henderson. So, yeah, tight end is certainly a position that we need to look at. Uh, youth at especially left tackle. Uh, I would also consider any kind of playmaker at wide receiver or on the defensive line or cornerback to be honest time for the best part of draft day sports we'll be quiet and watch this get the goosebumps get them going Such a good little cutscene there. Man, it gets me hyped every single time I look at it. Every single time. Oh, look at that. Best player available. A tight end. Let's see who the computer takes here. I don't know who that is. Let's just go to the... Oh, that was a defensive end. Good pick. Good pick. Defensive end. I don't think that we've got picks stockpiled. I never give away picks, but I don't think that I've got anything stockpiled. And I've got I've got it mixed up a little bit because I got a handful of different things going on. Uh, actually, I'm running another pro football save offline where I did stockpile some picks, uh, but in this one I don't believe that I did. So we're gonna move up to the next human pick, which should be at the end of the first round, and it certainly is. Let's pop over into our war room and see what people are suggesting. So, look at that. A 6-8 tight end out of UC. What, I mean, to the Bengals? Are you kidding me? Not great run blocking. Fast enough. 6 eights incredible. Man, oh man, uh, yeah, decent ratings over here. I don't know that that's a first rounder, but certainly a possibility. Uh, certainly a possibility. 
Let's take a look here at some of these tackles. Now, there's some good ratings. That's a definite step up. So he's strong as could be. He's got okay ratings on both of these. Not great intelligence. Definitely values money and playing time. So really a big strong tackle there. The only thing that worries me about that though, like if strength is his main asset, is he just another run blocker? Take a look at a defensive end, sure. Oh man. So not great top ratings, but down here, I mean, the, the agility, the intelligence, the tackling, those are so good. Not a whole lot of speed there. Take a look at some of these other tackles. Strength again, but the pass blocking is not great. Pretty good ratings. Can bench press a minibus. But see, it's great leadership. That's really cool to see. A team player. But again, it's really focused on strength, and his pass blocking is even worse than, than the other one. Now, his strength isn't great. Why are his hands so good? All right, so now here we go with a guy with some athleticism, some football IQ, intangibles, good certainty, his strength. Uh, I try to stick sort of close to the projections per round as far as who I'm looking at. But if you look at this, his strength definitely needs work, but he's got agility, intelligence, speed, and really good pass blocking rating. Uh, his, his coach grades are pushing you know they're all easily 28 pushing 29 he's got good leadership good work ethic he's a team player a good disposition so out of the tackles especially since we're specifically looking for a left tackle like so that was was it mccurry yeah so take a look here at these ratings football iq intangibles all this good stuff where strength is really the only downside and then compare him to Sherry, who is the top tackle. These inten these top line grades are all worse. His strength is definitively better. His run blocking is the same. His pass blocking is worse. His agility is worse. His intelligence is way worse. His ratings over here are slightly better. His leadership is worse. So I think... If we're going for a tackle, it's probably McCurry. Uh, I don't think that Doty is a great prospect for a first-round pick. Uh, I know I said we could get younger at guard. I don't know that's as much of a priority, although this is a pretty good one. It's an okay one. There's a pass blocker, but no run blocking. No run blocking out of him. All right, so strong safety. We're pretty set at safety. We could take a look at this tight end from Iowa. Not great ratings. Uh, nothing really jumping out okay blocker not good hands no good scout ratings oh man <sighs> who is uh, you know what let me think for a minute i'm gonna leave the draft screen and go back and look at my email 
because I believe that I had an email about a tackle. James Bruce Sard. Let's go take a look at him. If we can find him. All right, so here he is in round two. Coaches like him. The ratings don't really show it. Certainty's not there. Pass blocking's not there, no. No, 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 no. Let's bring all the positions back in. So these guys are wanting me to draft McMullen, and then the DC says Allen Williams, the linebacker. Linebacker is actually relatively safe. McMullen, I do like. Not the strongest guy, but he's got he's really good blocker. Really nice grades over here, so he would do well to fill in behind those aging guards that we have in Brown and Elfline. It's just a matter of what are we going to need more immediately is the reason that I'm sort of leaning toward McCurry. Uh, about the same age. Nothing really standing out there. Let's see if any of these wide outs really have anything. Really good hands there. Not killer ratings. Uh, not great ratings at all. Don't really want to go safety. Got a couple more tight ends here. Bad ratings, bad blocking. Pretty good speed, though. It's maybe something interesting if he sticks around into the second round. Ooh, I don't know if I can draft a tight end named Hernandez. Especially not with those ratings. <laughs> There's a run blocker. Alright, I think we go McCurry here fill a big gap that we're going to have coming up after this year. Now, I'm not crazy about drafting somebody in the first round who's really not going to make an impact this year. But at the same time, I feel like he fills such a huge hole on the team going forward for the next 10 years. But also we have Dwayne Brown. Great work ethic. Sportsmanship is great. From Cincinnati. Speed and hands aren't exceptional. And I don't know why I want a pass blocking tight end. Like I want a run blocking tight end. Because if it's a pass, the tight end needs to be going out to catch the pass. <sighs> Draft him a curry. <laughs> yeah, a little bit traumatized by Netflix, for sure. Oh, man. Let's close this view. Uh, I don't necessarily care what they have to say about it. We can see what they say. At least about the first rounder. Thoughts on this pick? Decent selection. Guy that'll help the team out. All right. Let's go on to the next human pick. Bounce over into the war room, see what's up. Frank Diamond is still there. I was targeting him in the last round. I'm still targeting him. The head coach and offensive coordinator really want me to go after a guard. I really want a tight end for Joe Burrow to throw the football to. Not crazy about these ratings. But he's got really good speed for a tight end. He's got some good top-end stuff going on. His hands are good enough. I think we grab Joe Burrow a target here. Plus, we definitely need some tight ends. <laughs> oh, let's at least take a look at the guards. 
This pass blocking is pretty good. Ratings aren't anything really special. Neither are bomb gardeners. Oh, his run and pass blocking are actually really nice. His strength sucks. Oh, hard to say. Hard to say. Let's grab Frank Diamond. And I'm going to be willing to bet there's a guard hanging around for us in the third round. That's going to be my guess. Let's get this tight end going. Move on to the next human pick. Oh, we still have we still have tight ends. We still have guards ready. Cornerback. Just terrible scouting ratings over here. Oh, how's he pulling? Oh, you got a uh, scraping in some of your uh, real life pictures there, Chris. Tight end was tw 21 years old. So just terrible coach grades over here. But he's got good. I don't. I don't know why. Uh, like the strength is just bad. Speed's all right. So that was Eddie Wall. Let's take a look. They want us to draft Harris James, another guard. But I do not see him on the first screen. <laughs> Your pass blocking is so bad. Your everything blocking is so bad. How are you an offensive lineman? Yikes. See if we need anything on the defensive side here. Uh, maybe strength, agility. Not a very good tackler. Not very good coach ratings. Feeling a strong no there. Is Eddie Wall the one that I've been to a handful of times? Yeah. And we're we're getting recommendations on him. They really want us to draft a guard. So uh, you know he's got that second, third round projection. He's got decent enough ratings. We'll go Eddie Wall here. And now we're to the we're moving on toward the back end of the draft, so we're probably just going with coach recommendations and filling out areas that we know we need. Actually, we do need a fullback. So this is a fullback here popping up with a third round rating. We can take him in the fourth. We'll do it. Now they're looking for some wideouts. Frank Fennel with F speed. What are you doing, man? Carson with D minus speed, but C hands, sure. If that's who the, the head coach says to pick, I will take him. Now we got a couple of people wanting Ratliff the linebacker. We will draft him. And ooh, we got a little bit. The coaches are all wanting us to go quarterback here late in the draft. So here are the prospects, and they're all projected to go undrafted. See if there's anybody we're actually interested in. Uh, oh, a whole lot of certainty. Whoa, look at the ratings. Look at these ratings over here on the right-hand side. They're so terrible. You got a D for accuracy and a D minus for arm. Oh, that's miserable. These guys are all terrible. I'm not drafting a quarterback. I'll pick one up in free agency as a just like add an emergency quarterback, whatever. Um, what did we need? We need to grab probably another tight end. This one was at least projected to be drafted. He can kind of run block. He's got some intangibles. Uh, 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 uh. 
how do we finish this off? I don't think I have to just... Yeah, yeah, Okay, so now we're into free agency. Let's see. Can I advance? No. The quarterbacks were miserably awful. They were just putrid. Going to progress through free agency because we're already very much over the salary cap. Getting into training camp now. So let's take a quick look here at the contract screen and see just what our salary cap situation is. We're almost $7 million over. All right, that's fair. Um, let me take a look at the roster. Scroll through here, see what our uh, rookies are rated out at. So, right off the bat, Ronnie Matta picked him up in round four, and he is rated as an 80 overall. So, <clears throat> you know, uh, we had we had lost the fullback that we'd had ever since I started this stream, I believe. Seathan Carter, maybe. Um, but anyway, like he was, I don't think he was even an 80 overall, and he was wanting a few million a year. So uh, we just let him go and, and picked up a fourth rounder, and looks like an improvement. Uh, Eddie Wall, the rookie guard, not a great overall rating. Take a look over here, though. The pass blocking and run blocking are both very much at the pro level. Uh, what is lacking? Intelligence is definitely lacking, and strength is lacking. So hopefully those pick up as time goes on, uh, but at the very least, he's reasonable, and he was a third rounder. End of the third round. Of course, we're drafting at the end of every round. So for the end of the third round, I think that's all right. Yeah, Mixon and Roberts are a really good one-two punch at the running back position. Even though Roberts gets the majority of the carries, I feel like Mixon gets a lot of the targets out of the backfield. So, the tackle McCurry, that is what I'm talking about. McCurry comes in with the 81 overall rating, so he's right there with Casper and Robinson. A really solid tackle. Let's see where he excels. Not in strength. He's behind there. Intelligence top of the top of the line he's better than Casper or robinson pass blocking better than either of them run blocking falls off a little bit so yes i feel great about this draft now not only did we grab ourselves a fullback not only did we get a decent guard but mccurry one million percent is our future at tackle so mitchell shorts will play out this year um mccurry will be a back up my guess is I put Cam Robinson on the practice squad, actually, uh, because Casper is going to be the right tackle. He's a hell of a player as far as run blocking goes at that right tackle position. So I'll probably continue to play him there, especially because he's younger than, than Cam Robinson. Robinson's probably in his prime, not getting much better. Uh, Casper could still grow a little. Uh, but McCurry, at the end of the first round... No, I think that's probably, that's worked out as well as it possibly could have. Frank Diamond and Logan Dietrich. Dietrich sucks. Uh, he was an extremely late pick, but he's garbage, so that was a wasted pick. But Frank Diamond's a 71, uh, so that's actually a pretty decent rating. Let's see, where is it at? So he's not quite as fast as Jordan Franks, uh, but he does have slightly better hands. Not quite as smart. Uh, not as good of a pass blocker. I could care less about that. Not quite as good of a run blocker. So he's not Jordan Franks, but uh, who is? Jordan Franks is a pretty good tight end. But I'm, I'm quite happy with that one. Robert Carson, uh, nothing special there, but he was a later pick. Brian Ratliff, again, nothing special out of a later pick. I feel good about that draft. I feel really, really good about that draft, to be quite honest. Let's get through these training camps. Just look at Cincinnati. So, oh, Sean Williams with a massive loss. Schwartz with big losses. Trayvon Henderson actually with some losses. Um, but these are all guys, they're all pushing 30 now. So, uh, definitely not shocking. 
look at where we got some gains. Cam Robinson with a big gain, so we're going to have to reevaluate between Robinson and Casper because Robinson had huge gains and Casper really had nothing. James Foreman also had quite good gains, the cornerback. Interesting. So we're right back to the preseason, guys. We're back to where we started the stream at. And let's take... Yeah, I really think so, Chris. Chris said in chat that he thinks that that draft could have guys playing 10 years at their spots. Uh, for the left tackle, I definitely think that's true. For the, for the tight end, certainly at the very least as a tight end, too, he could be a long-term answer, Frank Diamond. Um, the, the fullback is going to be a long-term player. Uh, we've got a handful of guys there. Uh, but really what I wanted to do out of that draft, just out of, out of where we were, where our salary cap is, where I prioritize football is obviously on the line, and obviously with a right-handed quarterback, the left tackle position is absolutely huge. If you've got a talented quarterback like Burrow, you need a pass-blocking left tackle, and I think that's what we got in McCaffrey. So I landed everything I possibly could have asked for in him as a first-rounder at the end of the first round. Uh, obviously, if you're at the top of the first round, you want somebody that's going to be more of a playmaker, you know, uh, whatever. But at the end of the first round, like, that's a good, solid pick, you know? Uh, he, he's going to be fine. And, yeah, you're right, 10-year starter at his position at the very least. Uh, same with a handful of guys there, but uh, I, I don't think, you know, we didn't screw it up. I don't know if we necessarily hit a home run, but we didn't screw it up, and that's about all that you can ask for. Uh, before we wrap up the stream, let's take a look at the season preview. These magazines, guys, if you don't check them out, it's scary how good they are at predicting how the season's going to go for teams. In not only Draft Day Sports Pro Football 2021, but in all of the Wolverine Studios products, these, these season previews are scary in how good they are. Um, let's take a look at what it says for us this year. And, and I don't know necessarily about like offensive rank, defensive rank, positional grades, but when it comes to like overall stuff, how you're going to finish, they're pretty good. So first in the division, third in the conference, fourth in the league. It very much has us still at the top. Uh, no key additions or subtractions, so it feels like we're pretty much the same team as we were last year. And to be quite honest, I would agree with that. I would agree with that. We didn't have any key additions because we were full on cap space. No key subtractions, so we didn't lose any of our difference makers. Uh, as Chris just pointed out in chat, we were drafting late. So just to, just to sort of reload with youth and not necessarily move up or down that in the NFL. I mean, if you're drafting at the end of the rounds and you're not losing ground, you're doing pretty good. So, um, you can see here, the, the computer thinks an awful lot of this offense and especially this offensive line. And that is what I've been waiting for. A B at quarterback, a B across the offensive line, a B at running back. I don't know why we've that, We've got A running backs, period. Um, still really hyped on our strong safeties. I would like for our defensive line grades to be a little bit higher. And maybe that's something I missed out on in this draft. You know, I, I definitely think McCaffrey was the right choice at tackle early. Maybe in the second or third round I should have looked to improve the lines. Uh, but I feel like we've got some underrated players on that defensive line. I feel like they've produced okay. So, it, you know, it's interesting. It still thinks we're going to be good. Uh, it's just a matter of how good. Now we'll actually play the games and see how it works out. But, <sighs> Chris throwing out some Louisville love for the cards. 4-0 beat the Badgers on Saturday. Last I heard, the Wisconsin game was canceled. Uh, so I don't know if it's back on. But anyway, let me save this before I screw anything up. All right, so we're saved. Uh, guys, that was year four of the Cincinnati Bengals. Uh, four trips to the playoffs, two trips to the Super Bowl, uh, two, one frustrating Super Bowl, and then tonight seemed like it was going to be a battle, and then it was just a late collapse. We fell apart in the fourth quarter. We didn't have a chance, uh, and so it was what I expected was the 49ers to beat us 
probably by more than the spread, and that ended up happening. But they teased us through three quarters. It looked like it was going to be a good game, and then it was an absolute blowout at the last minute. Uh, but you know what? We're, we're the Cincinnati Bengals, so what do you expect? <laughs> We've turned them into a contender. Uh, I feel great about how they're going to be moving forward. Uh, and we're in a good spot here. So I hope that you guys enjoyed it. I hope you're enjoying the pro football stream so far. I'm having an absolute blast with this. As I mentioned briefly earlier, I've uh, been having enough fun with it that I've started some offline stuff myself that I just do whenever I have some time. So uh, really getting into it. Hopefully I'll be able to get into the strategy and you know some more of that the training and those sorts of things that i know some people have been asking for i'm not quite there yet but i hope you guys had a blast i hope you enjoyed watching another super bowl i'm gonna cut it off here but i will see you guys